Okay, so we've got uh, a few things to get done with today. And by get done with, I mean try to work on and possibly fail at. <clears throat> so I'm just going to check our audio here real quick. Oh, that sounds really good. Wow. It's like I know what I'm doing. That's crazy. Pop out. Wait, where'd it go? No, wait. I always forget this. Yeah, that's right. Shift. All right, let's get our music back. Hopefully the music's not too distracting. We need to be over here. Whoops. Uh, move that over here. There we go. Got it. Okay, okay. All right, so we've got a few things here. First is, um, first is Mike Mike. So Mike Mike is hanging out down here, and Mike Mike needs some uh, some changes, some upgrades. Um, we have a. It's a let me okay. <laughs> let me start at the beginning here. So, I have this process I'm trying to do. I'm trying to apply a, a recursive process to this where I'm using uh, KiCad to reorient some of these uh, switch positions and I want to reorient them around a center point. So if I take this, um, if I take this switch right here and give it a rotation like that, I want to be, I want to have this next key down here. Let's go remember this button. No, was oh, it locked? Why is that locked? I don't know, whatever. Yeah, this is locked, that's weird. I want it to snap back over there like that. And then the next one does the same thing and aligns and, and so on. Uh, so the question is, am I going to be able, is that even the right, hang on, let me, let me check my angle. Uh, rotation angle is at the 10. So that's what it should actually be. Yeah, something like that. So then I want all the other switches to orient off of them uh, directly. And uh, let's see, this is right side of it, so. Technically, this uh, this best guess alignment point should work for 33 to 44 with rotation point of 26. That's right. So technically, when I do this, I should be able to hit enter and oops, oop. Look at that. See, just locked right into place. Um, that's what I'm going for. Except I want to do that for. All of this like this entire half of the keyboard uh, excluding the thumb switches and then likely have uh, some code for following up with the diodes associating the diodes so that they're in the same position uh, relative uh, so one of the things is this this code uh, executes a best guess and that's a hence hence the name you go see that best guess uh, and best guess is designed to that's about right uh, designed to take your previous position of the code and give a best guess estimate as to where it's going to show up. Let me. This is going to wind up being about KiCad, so let me change our title here. Or can I not? Yeah, who would want to change their title in, in the stream? This is this is totally fine. Okay, let me. Let me fix it. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, we're doing. We got Vexus features. We got Mike Mike. We got KiCad. KiCad. Keyboard. Mechanical. Fortnite. Uh, I forget what the other things are. <laughs> uh, uh, that should be fine. There we go. <laughs> Coding KiCad ergonomic mechanical keyboard. <laughs> Fortnite, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so the, the key position is actually set by um, the pre-positioning, your pre-positioning. So if I take this code that I already ran, which uh, aligned this button down here, M, yeah, put it like over here and run that code again, it'll, it realigns. Now if I take this and put it over here, 
and run that same code again. What is it? Alt up. Control P. No. Control up. Shift up. No. Well, that's weird. I'll just paste it then. Run the same code. We can see that it, it realigns uh, based on your best guess where, where it thinks the switch should be, where it thinks you want the switch to be. So some of these keys, it's going to work for that, but other keys like this, uh, I'm not sure if this is in a good relative position to realign itself with 33. So let's find out actually. Based off 33, realign 32 at 26 degrees, one unit spacing is 19.05, and then copy the orientation. So we'll see what 32 does here. Boop. So that actually looked right. So uh, this might this might be over before it begins. Um, the other thing is there's there's a vertical stagger in these. So once I get a full grid layout centered along K33, I'm going to uh, I want to be able to apply some scripting so that it just it drops all of these down uh, to their relative positions. But Again, that requires me to take the switch and say, given this current position, I want you to move down a little bit. And let's see, maybe that is a good way to do it. Let's see, I need a space. It's nine, yeah, whatever. Let me just grab this room. Oh, that's not gonna work, here we go. All right, I'm dropping Kira. Yeah, 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 you got it. Let's go over here. Oh, hey, Space, how's it going? Do you have an idea? Let's see if I can find. <clears throat> I think I put it here. Oh, this Dropbox view is always terrible. I keep forgetting I need to make local copies for stuff if I'm going to be using the SSHFS during a, a stream because it just doesn't it doesn't work well enough. Uh, and what is it called? I don't even know what that format is. XOJ. And dun dun dun. dun. Doop a doop. <laughs> I don't see this. It might not even be here. All right, well, whatever. This is no fun. So I might have to extend this code a little bit so that it uh, um, yeah see it determines it figures out the best case scenario uh, figures out what the the reference is and whether or not it's uh, larger or smaller in X and Y axis and then determines where it's it determines where the new sw the other switch is in relation to it and then determines what math needs to be what trigonometry needs to be applied to it to figure out how it can be oriented properly and aligned um, at whatever the angle is so what was it let's see and I don't think I'm going to be able to get that here Because all of this might just align automatically. That does make me kind of curious, though. Because I should be able to align based off whatever these, these positions are. So if I were to take 33 and align its neighbors to it. You see, that works. And then I can even go by distance. So if I do, uh, so I'm still still aligning off of 33 right here. But in this case, I aligned 21, but now I want to align nine. 
So actually, given its relative position, I might be able to change this and then change this to unit times two for distance. And we'll see what K9 does. Ah, is my work already done? Yeah, the um, you could set the set of keys as an object position vectors and then give it a centered transform and just rotate the transform. All the keys should just rotate it. So yeah, so there's a uh, there is a feature for you to do that, and I can select multiple units here, and then hit R. And hey presto, everything rotates off into space hilariously. Wee! Now uh, the only problem is <laughs> when KiCad does this. It rotates the uh, the pieces slightly off. Did you see um, when it came back around? This didn't line up. See, look at it. It's 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 walking off. Woo! Look at it go. I'm just hitting R. I'm saying rotate. Rotate in place is all I'm saying, and it's spiraling off <laughs> into space. <laughs> Ground control to major half of that keyboard. <laughs> what? This is this is KiCad. It's spiraling, twirling, twirling towards freedom. Uh, <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, I'm reverting. <laughs> Revert to last backup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, KiCad does amazing work when things are kind of aligned. Just generally, well, I don't want to be ungrateful. KiCad is fantastic software, um, <laughs> but it's, it's, there's quirks, you know, with any open source software, there's, there's quirks because you don't get to send the money and be like, hey, fix, fix my feature request. <laughs> so when you do stuff like that, uh, you know, it would be nice to be able to say uh, a couple of things uh, to be able to spiral your, your objects in place and just be like, Hello. Oh no, are we are we crashed? Yeah, th th this is this is a regression version of KiCad, or a, a backport kind of of five. So it doesn't surprise me if oh, there we go. Look at that. So let's get our area reselected here. That's mainly just the switches. I think the traces are included in that. I should be able to. Yeah, that is a, a an improvement from. Uh, version 4 that's a it's much easier to keep track of let's try that so ma mainly just the key switches here I think that that picked up traces though yeah see so we can move this around but our center point is like on the mouse we rotate on the mouse unless I move the mouse so that that actually is that might be reproducible we so this isn't bad <laughs> here we go this is this is peak this is peak engineering here. <laughs> oh man, I didn't get enough sleep or something. <laughs> okay, that was actually getting somewhere. So, <laughs> so I would have to like position my mouse immediately on this, this center point. And I can't actually move my mouse using the arrow keys here, which is pretty neat, but it doesn't snap. Yeah, I don't think there's a way to make it snap. So I could like do this, center my mouse and then zoom out and then <laughs> float around and rotate it. Because if that works, like, yeah, this is just kind of a test, but so let, let's go, let's go right here. And then we'll zoom out and then we'll just press rotate. Yes, boom. So ostensibly, <laughs> this, this should be indicative of what, what that actually should be. And then we'll we'll center back on. I think I left those guys out. There we go. And you and you. And then we'll go back in here. We'll center our mouse just like we did before. And now we have to do negative ten. So actually, this is this is actually a feature for the previous version that I wish I could have. A rotation angle is not uh, is not negative because <clears throat> that would be that would be nice. And you can't you can't do that. Oh, and it, and it actually crashes the entire... <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, 
part of getting the scripting console working was being able to oh the whole thing crashed yeah okay yeah did i mention this was a backport so it's it's pretty good and i get scripting console goodness so that's really good but uh <laughs> that's just not it is not uh it's not super reproducible i get this Where are you? There we go. That's the one. Very good. Where am I headed? So workspace six. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. So yeah, we're <laughs> on a, a scripting console. This is the this is the scripting console up here. This is the magic button that you get to actually control what goes on with the. Oh wait, I don't want that. Uh, what on earth? Oh, there it is. Wrong workspace. Come on back. There we go. I three can be a little cumbersome sometimes. Come on, this is this is what I'm talking about. I think that's centered. Uh, whatever. All right, this is fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Wait, what on earth? What am I doing? This goes over here. This is going really well. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're 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 back. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, space, 360 minus the angle. That's exactly right. And you'll find that if you do 360 minus the angle, there's a little bit of a float uh, left over. You know what? That was the earlier version. Let me try, let me try it. Uh, that actually might... Maybe they fixed it. Uh, because there were just these little little minor inconsistencies that were... Uh, you know, And that's the other thing. Like This would be cool to be able to leave in here, but, you know, whatever. So it's going to be about true fitty. And... Ah, oh, that's right. Yes. Uh, can I stop this and have it recover? No. No. <laughs> but thanks for playing. <laughs> I forgot the, the rotation point angle is only allowed to be between 0 or between 1 and 90. Or, you know, float point probably. So maybe I can get a little extra. So we find ourselves basically trying to work our way around uh, some of KiCad's, I want to call them idiosyncrasies, but it's not really, you know, like I said, I, I don't want to be ungrateful. This is a, this is a fantastic piece of software. Um, and I need to think very heavily about how much I'm going to donate to it because it, it does, it does need the support. It does need, it does, it is deserving. It is very deserving software. Um, but open source software is, you know, you, you pay upfront. Uh, you pay upfront by giving it your time and energy to figure out how to use it. And then your payback is on the dividends of you get to use this software forever instead of Fusion 360 switching to an alternative license scheme so that uh, you have to pay, pay to play or pay your monthly whatever switching to a, switching to a subscription model. Okay, yeah. Where was I? Okay, so this is here. I think I need to reload this. That's the wrong way to do that, actually. Uh, I figured this out in the first live stream. You have to do Control Shift V, and well, that doesn't look right. Control Shift V. Is that right? Did I do it automatically? Sometimes you learn how to do things mechanically. Are these separate lines? Oh, they are. Okay, yeah. Sometimes you pick up muscle memory and you do it without thinking. And then when you need to change that muscle memory, you like you think you did it wrong, but you actually already did it right because you just did it automatically. It's kind of an interesting problem to have. <laughs> All right, so 
so that was our that was our point right so let's see if we can do this because that's an interesting idea uh, so we've got 10 degrees right so we'll do our 10 degrees over here because we wrote we can only rotate one direction and we oh, let me change my filters hashtag no filters apparently I don't know how to change filters oh that's right what now I'm in some weird selection mode select filter selection um, let's do only footprints uh, yeah that should cover everything I need and we'll go ahead and select all of these we will exclude the thumb cluster items I think that's everything we need and now I'm going to do this this freehand thing where I just kind of put that cursor right in the middle of the hole <laughs> just about there you know and then press R be sure you want to move it they're locked yes done okay <laughs> so now we need to do a little bit of math so we're going to do uh, and I'm not going to do math in my head uh, 360 what do we want uh, we want 360 minus 10 so our goal is 350 it's about 350 so we're gonna divide that by 4 so we get 87.5 okay so our rotation point to be quadrupled is 87.5 so what had happened previously hello oh no 87.5 it's not gonna let me paste whatever who cares so let's go back over here I think we got everything here yeah that looks good hey turn it down <laughs> it looks like click list is today at two to three that's my very attractive boy. Look at that. <laughs> All right, so we're centering on hole again. And we'll, we'll zoom out. And now we're going to rotate four times with the delta of 27.5 being 3 or 2.5 off of 90. So we're accumulating 2.5 degrees of less rotation times 4 <laughs> to equal... 10 full degrees and 350 degrees so here we go the mouse is centered i'm not touching it let me just do that again just to make sure okay yeah, we're, we're we're in the right spot i'm not touching the ball okay there it still seems to move though doesn't it yeah it's definitely snapping i'm gonna assume it snapped on the other side and we'll just we'll call it i have zoomed out i'm gonna press r one yes two three four so believe it or not, this actually looks right. This is actually, I mean, like, this code is interesting, and I want to figure out how to do this, because that'll help with other PCB modifications, but, like, that was actually, this might be accurate. This might be good. So our, let's see, we'll do a little bit of math here. <clears throat> I'm actually going to get a Python, you know, idiot, there's a Python shell right here, come on. So our center point here. Right, there's our center X. Test this real quick. There's our redo. 150, 2.7. Yep, so that's the X position. So our X position is this. Hello? Come on. Oh, the, the I forgot about that i3 doesn't let you change context from floating windows <clears throat> from pop-up windows that took it right okay yeah this happens to be a python console even though it's a KiCad scripting console sure sure whatever <laughs> so this actually this might be okay <laughs> so here's this x position we'll call that uh position a and we'll take this position and we'll call this position b Okay, so x minus, or let's actually do b minus a equals that, and then we divide that by 2. I guess we'll just use parentheses then. One five, b minus a gets our difference, and then divided by 2 is going to be that value plus a 
plus a and what was our x so it's still off i mean it's off by you know a hundredth of a millimeter or a little less than that so four to six sixteenth sixteen thousandths of a millimeter this is probably not bad uh but <laughs> you know this is kind of the layout we have hmm so what's interesting about this is in order to recreate this you have a um, you need to set up these these uh, switches in their proper position so if I grab let's see um, let me see if I can grab a switch here real quick okay can I can brother help me I don't think we're non-responsive uh, okay that's fine that's fine oh are these paths screwed up oh no they're okay okay all right good so let's do our uh, MX Alps let's just grab that boy this boy come on there we go so we'll drop that boy right there and uh, deselect, please deselect, please clap. There we go. And I think we can duplicate. There we go. So there's our, our other one right right here. This is the whole point of this is to be able to set up our custom user grid and to be able to go, hey you, let's move you right here. And then we'll take this and go. Wait. Hello. Oh yeah, I forget about that. It does this this automatic select thing. And we're not moving by custom grid for some reason. That's weird. Are we, are we actually snapping? We are, okay. That is really unnecessary. <laughs> I might have adjusted the custom grid a bit too much. So the idea is that the, the distance between any individual switch is usually, um, is, well, it is a quarter of an inch on in the Imperial, but 19.05 millimeters. So if we set our, um, I think it's in here now. No. It's the grid controls. And grid settings, here we go. Yeah, see, I don't even think that user-defined grid is correct. There's a really good, um, well, let's just do 19.05. Uh, so the idea is that once we're in this grid position, this is super annoying. I'm going to change this real quick. Uh, hotkeys. Move is capital M, I think. I can never tell what it is. There it is. So we'll change that to, um, I think I did Shift G. There we go. Okay. This is because I'm mousing with this hand and my left hand is on here. Being able to do M is annoying. So I try to put stuff on the left hand. So if I grab this, boom. And now basically, is it realigned? Okay, there we go. Now basically, I have no choice but to place these switches on the snapped grid of proper spacing. So if I build a keyboard, I can build a 40%, uh, build whatever I want, grid layout. Uh, but if I want to do some kind of vertical stagger, I can't. Or horizontal stagger, I can't. Or even vertical stagger, I can't, because it only snaps. See, we do get fractions, that's interesting. But going vertical, it's just like a little iffy. It's also just kind of spazzing out, which is a little bit disheartening. I feel like something's wrong here. Is it because it's not centering on the hole? Hmm. So the idea is that you take that uh, you take that grid layout, and I've already forgotten where the grid layout is. This is this is great. We're doing we're doing really good here. We <laughs> go. All right, nineteen point oh five. Let me take that, and we say shoot. All right, nineteen eight oh five divided by two, and now we've got that fraction of a grid. Now, if we take that and go by four, we get a quarter 
of a grid. And if we set that up, okay, everyone just remember it's under view, all right? Just, just whisper view to me when I go looking for it. And I'll be like, right, right, yeah, I remember now. So now we can very easily take these switches and go, all right, cool. So I'll put this over here, move it over there. And these align properly. So we still get a solid, uh, we can create these, create these sections. This, what is it, control D? Yeah, there we go. And we're, we're perfectly aligned here. But now since we've got a quarter grid snap, we can do stuff like this and create uh, this horizontal stagger that is standard and so ridiculous. Or we could do stuff that's like actually ergonomic and make some vertical stagger. So we're, we're incrementing by a very fixed amount. We're in incrementing by this quarter value right here. And uh, I think I'm actually gonna make it eight uh, just because that's cool. And you remember where it is, it's under view. I remembered. And then we can set our reset our grid to basically half of that. That's what would be kind of cool about being able to do math in that. You know, give give it a, a, a give it a mathematical expression and let it figure it out. And now everything's aligned right here, so we're we're good. We're in good shape. Uh, however, when we start doing things like making, <clears throat> is it general preferences? Are you gonna are you gonna let me hover over that? Are we crashing right now? Yeah, I think we're crashing right now. Oh no, we're back. We're back. It's all good. Let's set this to ten, and then we can take this uh, this key layout that we've made, grab the whole thing, and go. And hey, presto, we've got uh, angle ten degrees. But our grid layout is not angle ten degrees, which. Uh, yeah, just because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a genius here. We're gonna set grid origin. That's fine. Grid fast switching. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's no, there's no center point for that. That's fine. Now if I grab this and move it where we've lost, we've lost our alignment. This is technically the right position. But if I were to duplicate this and make another one, I'm not gonna be able to snap, snap into these proper positions. So we're not, we're not getting that. Which was the whole point of this uh, this exercise with this thing, so that you can realign manually, essentially. So this becomes a question of uh, where this becomes a question of come on, there we go. Where we're going to actually what what we do first, essentially. Because there are some modifications that this uh, this area that needs to be made to this area, and it would be better if we could keep it angled, and then just move them around using this this code up here in the scripting console, so that it already works. But it's it's just, it's like it's cheap and easier to be able to say, grab this. Uh, let's see, we're at 20, 26 rotation. See, it says negative 360 to 360. Oh, that's the individual footprint. Okay. Yeah, if you want to do the, the, the R rotation, the shortcut rotation, it has to be that 90 degrees. So the idea is that if we could take these and unrotate them, which I think our rotation point is, so let's counterclockwise. So let's do this half. So this is 334. And of course, we all know that 334 uh, 360 minus 334 is 26 degrees. I knew that. And the other side's 26. What do I even? <laughs> if we set our, our shortcut rotation point to 26, then we can grab all these boys. I'll oh, see. I missed one down here. And hit R. Okay, come on. Give me the footprint. There we go. Hit R. And now everything is correct. Everything is moved to the proper location. And now we can use our grid and say, all right, Mr. Customer, you want to move this? Boom, snap, easy. Everything's, everything's back to snapping normally. And we can move things in relation to the other. Come on, there we go. Or can we? See, this looks a little off. 
See, that's the other thing. It's like all this, it just kind of slips. It slips just a little bit. And if you reselect it and replace it, it, it realigns. But it has to be realigned. See, this is what I'm talking about. Just a little fidgety. And again, this is something that KiCad is not uh, really made to do, you know, super natively. Um, but it's something that I wanted to do. And the fact that I have a scripting console here that I can do whatever I want with, uh, like, why shouldn't I? After all, why not? Why shouldn't I script the whole thing? So this is, <laughs> you know, doing that uh, 87.5 degree uh, rotation and just being like, yeah, you know, that, that works. That's, that's okay. Uh, it's close enough, but this is, this is definitely a value to be able to set up this center point and say, all right, off of K33, grab all the neighbors and then adjust them. And then that would, uh, yeah, that would snap them to a grid. And then I can say, okay, all of, all of this row right here, drop down a quarter. And that's actually uh, a value. Let me, where was I? Yeah, okay, so here we go. We're, I think we have an eighth rotation, or eighth, eighth step. So I think these are all at quarter steps. So let me just grab these. One, two, one, two, yeah, one, two. So that's uh, at eighth step, oops. Sounds like Alaric, that weird switch game that hacked itself to the front page. Uh, so I think this this drop is quarter, and I'm, I'm actually pretty sure that that's what it set up for all of these. See, and that column gets corrected. Yeah. Okay, so these are all a these are all a quarter drop. Is this a quarter drop? One. No, that's an eighth. Is that true? Oh, that one's being adjusted though. Okay, yeah, never mind. That's actually gonna wind up. That's one of the, the requested changes. There we go. See, and then you can use the, you can use mouse buttons for this. This is mouse buttons. I mean, cursor buttons. And then you can skip by grid lay by grid, moving the cursor around just using the arrows, and select footprints, and then de-align and realign them. So in this vertical layout, things are really nice. Uh, but your rotation point, you know, when you want to, when you finish changing it and you want to rotate everything to the appropriate angle, you have to do this, uh, you know, this this spiral galaxy. Woohoo! You know, you, you play this game, and this is just fun to do, so I'm just I'm just having fun here. <laughs> so what we have to do is actually just generate our uh Yes, this is so just I'm just explaining this right now. And it's actually a value to explain it. So I can like this space brought this up as like why don't you just why can't we just rotate it? And you can, kind of, but it floats off of this, uh, this wherever your mouse cursor is, which like should be here, but it's kind of not because when I zoom out, it snaps to the nearest grid. So I could probably get pretty close, just like eyeballing it, uh, but you know, just leave the mouse in there and then reset the grid to something insane like this. It's not that insane, thing like that. Yeah, if I put it right here. The mouse still jumps just slightly, but it still jumps. It's again unnoticeable, really, but this is this is a little bit impractical, and we're we're investing in the future of our uh, of our KiCad and of our scripting console and of stuff that helps us to make more ergonomic keyboards. So in this case, we actually need to keep track of the relation between all these keys, which was what I was doing over here, because this is these are the numbers that we want. So we should be generating a, a matrix off of this. To figure out what the relation is. So that we can move all these. Um, but if I recall correctly, all of these kind of moved in the same general location. Uh, at least on this half. So if we grab this here and we set our... No, don't do that. 
this all this clicking is very annoying it's fl flipping back to these general options uh and which leads me to to mic mic uh that's actually something I, something else i wanted to work on um i was thinking here this is these are the fishes um <laughs> we had talked about these before uh but we've also i realized i've also got some other stuff and then no that's not it so there's our there's our rain rainfall in the uh, in the console highly highly useful stuff there's of course the the old favorite c matrix which is uh, a cool way to impress all your friends you know all the, all the girls love it <laughs> they 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 don't they don't 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 do that they don't actually love it uh, but uh, you can actually use uh, I think I've got yeah so like this with V lock so you can do a, a lock and it'll do the matrix and as soon as you you, you want to get out of it you hit Q and it tells you that uh, you know, the whole thing's the the, top, the console is locked so then you can do cool stuff like that hang on Sorry. I do have to like pretend I actually know something about security. <laughs> I did hear about something rather interesting about uh well that's that's not important right now. I don't want to talk about that. Um let's see. Right, so we have these switches that have different relations and the uh the key ID is what we want to center things off of. So what we want to be able to do is reorient this entire half of it. Uh, given the switch's current positions, you know, more or less, and then realign them. So if we take, hmm, so we want to run data down this line of, of points, but we also want to center off of this center point. So if we orient off of K33, let's do some, some pseudocode here. Um, I kind of need to see that, actually. So let's do this. Move K30, move K33, uh, rotate K33. Mm, we need column associations, which is easy enough. Association. Yeah, you know what? That's fine. We're leaving that. We're leaving that there. <laughs> um, once we build column associations, we'll be able to build off of that that center point. But we kind of have to build this first column first, and then I think we can build the rest because we kind of need to get to the top of this. So my my plan is to build this to center, rotate this, rotate the keys above it. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, he's above K33. I can't type. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, when cherry switches start to die, which some of these probably are, I start to get double strikes on them. So I had one with N and changed it out, and I have one with V now. So. I'll see if that continues. Maybe it's just my my fancy fat fingers here. All right, we align the keys above it. Uh, get to top of column. Then align nearby columns with vertical stagger. Word wrap. Truncate. Oh wait, I don't want that. Yeah vertical stagger then uh, I'll build column associations for all columns and then we build the rest downstream from here okay so that means we've got 
we can do this in order. So the first thing we need to do is locate our center key. And we're just gonna build a little bit of pseudocode here. So center key equals equals k. I literally can't type. Oh goodness. Our baby's okay? <laughs> So we assign our sender key, then we need to know uh, the keys that are above. Above sender key. And that would be K21 and K9. We align these, we run the above sender key, and then we'll need Keys, keys right. I guess you could call it that. Keys right of center column. Uh, yeah. And then we'll do that with uh, ten. 11, 12, 10, 11, 12, that's it. Okay, now I don't like the truncate anymore. And we'll do left, oops. Left, This would be eight. Yeah, eight, seven, and we'll figure out what to do with 61. 61's kind of out of band, anyways. So we're stepping those left and right. I kind of don't want to do too much Python code for this because it's just kind of annoying. Where are we? So we're going to target and match. Origin, target, target. Is that what I called this? Module reference. Yeah, origin reference and mod reference. Origin and target. Okay. Then our angle is always going to be 20 degrees. Uh, I guess it's just angle. Right, we are going to move a unit times spacing. Spacing will start at one and advance uh, based on how far it gets through the list. So let's do some simple, simple code, and we'll adapt it later. I should probably be saving this. Think of game character rotates and is holding sword. As a result, sword also rotates. Yeah, it's like an extension of the rotation, and that's calculated in the trigger damage. Uh, I don't have that here. This is bothersome. Hang on a sec. Let me see if I can find that. Here. I might take a little bit to come up. I actually think I can still. Oh, that's interesting. So if the, the floating window is in a separate on a separate screen, then it doesn't interfere with this workspace. Like I can still type into this area here. That's useful, I guess. Whatever, I3. Whatever. I'm gonna find myself on DWM pretty soon, just to just to be cool for cool points. <clears throat> right, so the first thing we need to do is orient K31. And let's let's just step through this then. So center key. Uh, well, actually, we need to, to build the orientation of it based on the target orientation. So our goal is to add 10 to this, which means 26. So this is where, this is our center point. This is where the, the middle finger is. So this is where things are going to rotate around our center point. 
So that means we will take 21 and align it to 33 with the best guess rotation uh, with unit spacing as it steps further upward. Um, does this work? I don't, I don't remember my Python syntax. Uh, one, plus plus, no, a plus equals one. Okay, plus equals. Plus equals one. We'll put that there. And our target it has to increment for for origin. Nope, for target in origin above center key. That's good. Our, our white spacing here, of course. Uh, Python mode. There we go. That's friendlier, right? Yeah, this is okay. Uh, you know, it's actually kind of stupid to do this over here. I'm not going to do this uh, in the scratch buffer. Scratch buffer is always a bad idea to put mess around in. I'm just going to go down here. Hello. save stuff over here and get auto save because you don't get any auto save with the scratch buffer hello are you ever going to populate maybe not okay are we caught up no we are not caught up oh there we go all screwed up. I can't see the screen anymore. I'm pretty sure you can see it. Where was I? No. There. So we're going to... Come on. Delay. There we go. Alright. This is not functional. Don't at me. Target equals center canter center key. I think that's right. Angle. Do that. This is the imperative section. Your center point. Okay, start with. Vertical and horizontal aligned keys. Position rotate around the pivot. Yes. Uh, so yes, we can do that. Um, but I decided I, I still want to do. I still want to make this code because everything's just a little bit off, and I would rather interface directly through the um, through the scripting console than interface with uh, KiCad's changing interface as time goes on uh, because it just it seems to tweak itself ever slightly and uh, learning the caveats is not as great of an idea as just writing code that will do the thing I wanted to do this is a somewhat common request and I can see it being used to customize keyboard circuit boards uh, pretty easily oh it loaded so this would have been from January. Let's see if this works. January of 2020. So maybe this one. Nope, that's not it. I'm not waiting for it to do that again. Alright, well, whatever. I used to have the I have a Xurnal, X-O-U-R-N-A-L file that has an explanation for this code. 
um, up here, but it's, I can't seem to find it right now. So I'm just having a fun time right here by myself. So this will set our origin to, wait, then it right? No, it's, uh, yeah, origin. So if we do that, then we're going to go by unit spacing. Eh, okay, so technically this should this should work. And if it doesn't, we'll just revert. Yeah, I'm not. Why don't you rice your i3wm just a little bit? I don't get gaps, dude. Like I don't understand that. I guess the, the answer is it's just ricing, but I don't. I don't rice, man. Let's see if this works. So this should move off K30. Wait, did I set the origin? Yeah, orienting. So this should move above center key, move K21 right here and K9 to reorient off K33, increasing spacing each time, which is unit time spacing. So this should do the thing when I do this thing, or it'll crash. And the answer is no. The answer is no. So this, see, it should have done this. Bruh, it didn't do anything. So for target in above center key, which is down here. Let's see. Origin center key, that's defined. Oh, it's not defined. Yeah, I'm a genius. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really super smart. That's me. There, try that. Ah, oh, shoot, I did it wrong. You have to do shift paste. There we go, now we're doing stuff. Ooh, look at that, look at that, look at that. It moved, they moved, they did the thing. Specifically the thing that I requested. Uh, so we do that. And then we need to do a manual align off of this one at the bottom of the column, below 33, which we can do with this. Mm -hmm. Boom, look at that. So now we're aligned, we've got the top row here. And K9 is our new top, uh, which is defined above center key. So we need center key top row key, I guess. Uh, I think that's right. No man, if I was if I was on Arch, I would have uh, I would have put. Let me see. I would have this 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 pop up in the corner here. Toilet, gay. I don't have a toilet. I would just have this. I would just have this right here. Just leave that constantly on the screen. Put that right there. I don't even. I don't even need my camera. I don't need my camera there. I'll just leave that up instead of my camera. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is Debian because I va <laughs> I value my time. No, <laughs> it's because I don't. I don't really care about distros. I'm, I might eat my words on that because I I am getting kind of tired of Debian. So <laughs> I might find myself on. Uh, uh, someone told me about a, a, a distro that was pretty solid and let me do the it was oh man you're right it is actually arch it was like arch but with uh, somewhat pre-packaged so I don't have to spend a bunch of time doing it because this is like this is what I do dude like I make circuit boards I make I make keyboards I make code for this stuff I, I look at fishes like this is this is me, man. I don't have time. I don't really care, frankly, to uh, to mess around with this. 
with my distro that much. I just need it to work. And if it doesn't work, or if I had a, a tweaky change that breaks a bunch of stuff, then it's like, you know, now I just lost, you know, five hours of billable time because I need to mess around with this and figure out what's wrong with it. And I, I just don't have time for it. I don't, I don't care. Um, so this moves here. This is, this is the new center point of all of this. And I'm actually kind of wondering whether or not I want that to be the center point because maybe K44 should be the center point. I think that would be a better alignment for the current layout because we're not changing the spacing. Like the, the, the halves are not being separated more. So let's do, uh, that's revert. Revert, revert or die. There we go. So we'll reset our set. Oh, it's already set. Look at that. Oh man, this is so cool. It's like production software. So rotate K44. We'll set K44 to our center. We'll move K33 to above center key. K33. Our top center row key is still that. Keys right of it are still that. And then K8 and K7, I think. Yeah. I'm gonna have to line by columns, so I don't know. Let's see. I think the rest of this just works. It just works. It just works as long as you paste it correctly. Ooh, that didn't that didn't look right. <laughs> this does not just works. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I do the wrong? Quit it. Quit it. Quit it. GV. No. What did I last have selected? I just did that bottom half. Yeah, that's not that's not gonna work. Need to rerun the whole the whole code suite. So we'll take this, we'll rotate that plus 10 degrees to 26. That's accurate. And we'll take the rest of this. There we go. Now we'll take the whole thing and control shift paste. And now it should do stuff or crash. Hey, it did stuff and didn't crash. So this looks like this looks like a better setter point, I think. I can see everything moving around that. So the next question is, are these going to, are these neighboring keys going to align around K9 properly? And we'll find out. Because we've got center top key. Let's do basically the same thing, except our origin point is going to be center top key. And center top row key. And then we'll be cycling through mm, keys right of center column. Um, yeah, I think that's right. There's our target in keys right of center column, best guess origin, best spacing one. Yeah, I think that might actually just work. Yo, that's not, <laughs> that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> Unit in space, oh, space is not reset. Which that that's kind of funny, anyways. There we go. Bloop! Look at that. Oh man. One might be compelled to think that I know what I'm doing. <sighs> we'll do the same thing. Reset center spacing one, but this time for keys target keys left. There we go. The goal is just going to be to, to get this to the point where we can just um, paste all this in and the whole thing realigns around it. Which is, I don't care if it's imperative, dude. Like, we can just, I'll make functional code later. This is, <laughs> this is just getting, getting work done. Um, yeah, see these, these diodes though, that, 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 that kind of bugs me because they're not in the correct general location and, and if they're not in the correct general location I'm gonna have to move them around uh, YNI3 not Q tile DWM monad or something else 
uh, i3 was simple to set up and I didn't care to mess around with it. I only started messing around with i3 because I like the keyboard controls, uh, which lots of other tiled window managers now support, which is really nice uh, because I don't like I don't like mousing around that much. Uh, although you know I say that, but I got after I got this trackball, uh, I've been mousing a lot more comfortably, so it's like not as big of a deal. Uh, plus, it's, it's kind of easy to float around while you have uh, the trackball with a high sensitivity. Uh, so, I still like the tiling manager. The other thing is like when you have a tiling manager and you have something that doesn't have great resolution, like the um, the ThinkPad series, uh, especially the older ThinkPad series, it's you just wind up like it's mostly like all this is window dressing. It's it's literally dressing around the window. <laughs> like this is the workspace that you're working in, and not everything has the tab. Uh, hide window thing. I don't know what tab does in in KiCad. So, like it would it would hide all of this. Basically, go full screen. This probably has a full screen setting. Probably under view. Zoom to fit. Zoom selection. Pull under crosshair. Yeah, maybe maybe not. I don't know. But the point is, you you like get more screen real estate if you don't have all that window dressing around it, um, and just having everything just take up the entire screen is, is very nice these are obviously like big screens I've got another screen over here it's doing vertical uh, vertical layout there it is you can see it and that uh, you know they're good monitors and they don't need the resolution but I kind of got hooked on the, the speed of the the keyboard controlled window uh, window control system so the thing I'm kind of worried about is the further we get from the origin point, the further these diodes move, because technically these diodes are set up to be associated so that, uh, why doesn't this D have a number? Dude, that's weird. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's D26. See, so D diode 26 is associated with K26. So these are meant to match. Um, and if I take this, you know, K44, which is our center point, our starting point, we can take uh, D44 right down here and say, um, oh, there we go. Uh, 44, D, what did I say, D44, set this for half a unit. And the, oh. <laughs> Match orientation. What is the orientation supposed to be? Oh, that is the orientation. Uh, so actually, we'll do this and then we'll add 90 degrees to that, I think. Yeah, I think we have to do that. Let's do 45. 45 is more useful. R, R, there we go. So the idea is that after this moves, you'll be able to use best guess to guess where the the, the diode is supposed to be in relation to its host. Uh, but up here, K33, you know, K33, you could probably get away with that. But like up here at K7, like K7 is, K7 down, I don't even know where K7 is. So K7 is over here. If we do that with, with D7, like that's gonna be weird. Oops. Um, I'm just kind of curious what it does. Yeah, it wasn't so bad. Yeah, I think we can do this. Well, this one's actually right in the middle. That's K8. Oh my goodness. Madness of stars. There we go. Oh, that's interesting. So that's that's actually an all right position. <laughs> yeah, the diode's uh, it's aligned along the edge of the key. This isn't, that's not too bad. Uh, I kind of like that actually. So this might not actually be a problem. So we'll do this and now we have to build something along the other side. Um, where am I? Oh, right, so DWM is something that I've considered um, 
Arch is actually something that I'm considering. <laughs> There's that uh, version of Arch that's supposed to be a little bit easier to set up because I don't, I don't really care to spend the time on it. Uh, space. You might even have an imaginary square that you rotate and the keys are positional vectors from the square center. Yeah, I get what you're saying. That's a so we would have our, our center point and then set it up as a, you know things would be graphed in relation to that center point uh, divided by by unit spacing, and then after that you would calculate just the trigonometry to figure out where the, the next position would be and then copy the rotation because like stuff like this like K44 and K45 like this would just it would just pick it up. Oops. A45, but without the orientation, it'll calculate the correct position, but not orient it. Oh, that's half a unit, sorry. So this is the correct position, but it's not it's not oriented correctly. But if I copy the orientation, now we're suddenly you know, we're, we're aligned, we're square correctly. And that's that's just what this orient section does, is it decides whether or not the new key position is going to copy the orientation uh, of the host, the, the origin point. So, yeah, if I had it to do over again, that's probably how I would do it, but I think, I think we can kind of hack this together uh, with some imperative programming and just build, you know, a list of things to do, a set of instructions from our, our pseudocode here. Uh, we do need to build column associations for all of these because the columns are going to build off the top center points. So technically we can cycle through all the columns or all the columns that need the alignment. Uh, let's see. It might actually make sense to when while we are moving these I don't know what I just did there. There we go. While we're moving these to uh, make our change to the diodes of those same keys. Because <sighs> then we're kind of stepping along with them. Hmm. You would really like the dynamic WM is there allocated windows in a better way? Yeah, I, I, I've watched a few things on it. Um, I actually probably will do do the build for it. DWM or um, suckless tools are great. I really like them. There's always just like a few things that are a little bit off that you kind of have to tweak. And I think that's kind of like, a, <laughs> I think that that's almost like intentional so that you have to be able to get into the C code and figure out what's going on and be like, oh, well, let me just tweak this and make this make more sense. Like there's is uh, there was some localization that was set up wrong in my uh, suckless terminal, and I couldn't figure out how to get around it, and I waded into the code, and I'm like, I kind of don't care at this point. Like I spent enough time on it that I was like, all right, I'm I've I've lost interest. I don't care. Like I didn't get enough out of it to to put more time into it. Um, so I think the next step here. Uh, scene graph. Are you familiar with scene graph? I have no idea what scene graph is. Uh, let me see here. So you do that. That's uh. Yeah, maybe putting uh. Searching random things that are suggested to me. This might not be a great idea. Um. Yeah, that's cool. That's uh. Uh, mind map. Yeah, mind map building these like uh, logical layouts. It's it's one of the, it's a cool exercise because you always kind of like this looks like it. It's actually just like flow. Logic flows.
Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I might have to check that out. The idea would be that would be for uh, orienting the, or laying out the uh, the pseudocode here, or uh, I, mean, I would rather it uh, apply directly to the crying baby. Oh my goodness! We got these kids chairs and they're they're great for the kids, but they they don't sit in them normally. They just rock on them and you know, I'm just like waiting for them to fall over. <laughs> um and that that that's what happens usually. <laughs> I can actually probably realign all these diodes and give them just a best guess. Alright, so we need to go off of our uh what did I say? Columns. So we need to build uh columns. That build off the target point. Um, I don't think we need that. Uh, well, actually, we need to realign the columns with the the top key. Hmm. We can actually do this a little bit more. Gener generatively. I'm not even sure if that's a word. I'm going to say it is. Uh, let's try it with this column here. So, column, what is this? It's column 12 or column 11. It would be 12, uh, 4. I think we're just increasing by. We're doing by 12s, except for 58. And that's let's say 24, 36. Oops. Origin to this. This is kind of funky. Uh, I'm kind of curious to know what happens. Spacing will be one. So we're actually going to re center off of this, uh, this center point each time. Hello. Hello. There we go. angry babies it's the save so this system I'm trying to get off of uh, Dropbox and part of getting off of Dropbox is having something that syncs the files and like something older like rsync I could probably work something up like that but just using SSHFS has been really helpful uh, except when the networks locked up because when the networks locked up then SSHFS is laggy and the computer is not necessarily expecting to have difficulty writing to what it, uh, you know, SSHFS mounts it as a, uh, essentially as a local drive, and it kind of treats it as a local drive. So if it lags, then everything lags. It's, it's lagging in an unexpected way. So we get this this situation. I'm gonna control G out of this. There we go. And then let's turn auto save mode off. So we don't get those lockups. There we go. So we're going to, what I say, column 11, for target in column 11. Oh, 
See, I want to do this recursively, but I don't think I can do that. If grabbing the first item and then moving on to the next. Unless we skip the first. Eh. Eh. So, let's do our origin as the top of the column. Yeah, that, that doesn't really actually play very well. My original idea was to have it uh, have it step to this one and move it uh, zero degrees off itself, which actually needs special functions for that. And then set this to the origin and this to the target and have it align. Then set this to the origin and this to the target and have it align. And this to the origin and this to the target and have it align and just kind of step through that way. If you don't want to implement a scene graph, game devs, character holds up sword, rotates, so does the other. So you can have all your diodes set up. Yeah, I think I, I think I get what you're saying, where the, the objects have more, uh, they're more like relation, the objects have relationships to each other, and then moving one moves the other. That's, that's interesting. It's an interesting idea. And it's probably worth exploring. Hmm. Huh. I'm going to try to think about how I would implement something like that. Because this is all kind of, like I said, I'm just I'm just messing around with this, this imperative code. Uh, but in the future, yeah, like determining the relations. See, some of these diodes have alternative relationships, uh, different positions with uh, relation to their hosts. So like this is, uh, so this is K8 or D8, D, uh, 48? Yeah, 48. So 48 is actually not centered with uh, K48. It's offset. Uh, but it does the same orientation. So if I were to move this, I would need to know what that relationship is normally, and then what the updated, uh, you know, orientation of this is, and then this would have to update its orientation and then align properly to the the same relative position. So that is an interesting idea. I might have to I might have to figure something like that out later. Um, where was I? Right. Uh, yeah, we were, we were being imperative. Uh, 11. Let's do that. So we do that. We'll reset column 11. And we're essentially doing the, the same thing we did above. So, like, whatever, man, I guess. It's, it's all good. Hello? Oh, there we go. Why do we have a, a one spacing? So that should have been offset. Spacing is one, K12, K1. Is there spacing not reset? I selected this whole thing. Spacing should have been set. Hmm. It's the right orientation, but I don't understand why K12 is not set. And we are orienting. I don't get that. That actually, that should have worked. Why would the spacing be two? Because the alignment goes through there. This, did I make a typo? No, it's the same type. Yeah. Column 11. Column 11 is reset. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh boy. <coughs> our target is. Our target is not reset. No, wait. The origin is reset. Yeah. Bruh. Ah, K24 runs twice. There we go. All these should fall in line. There we go. Uh, 
Uh, what is that pop function? Pull, remove, pull 11, remove. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Interesting. <clears throat> Have to do that for each column. Uh, pop work. Ah, uh, there we go. That makes sense. <laughs> so we would take uh, column 11. Set this up correctly. Yeah, there we go. 11 equals... Zero. And then uh, see if I can remember my put. No. Insert. Index. Okay. Maybe six. Does that work? Yeah, it looks about right. And we'll correct our, our column afterwards. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> I just had this duplicated in here. Set that. That's not right. What is this? Four spaces? What is this? There we go. I mean, technically, when we pass this, it's not actually, this doesn't need to be corrected at the end because it's, uh, it's uh, immutable once it comes over. We're just making a copy. Column 11, 10 is 11. That's not complicated. That's not confusing at all. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a good point. <laughs> we'll, we'll number by. Oh, shoot. These are these are bonus keys. That's not going to work. No, we'll make it more readable then. We're going to use human numbering. <laughs> Ten, eleven, column down. Uh, I want 
try something. Yank GV change R equals paste plus 11 equals no R paste no R equals control Y plus 11 that's weird so that's broken insert R equals one plus one enter yeah it doesn't it doesn't put the output that's kind of a bug hmm uh, I have some lisp, lisp code around here. Increment number at point. Okay, so if I do if I do that. I want to turn that into a keystroke so you see my 11 we're incrementing each of these stepping down <sighs> I literally can't thinking um all right well when you can't think you just do one of these so here's k 11 do 12 let me see let me see if i can remember how to do this spoiler alert i can't Eleven twenty four. Do this. Put a number of point Q put number of point. not letting me do this while I'm recording a macro <laughs> so we'll just do this just stupid and uh, quit recording oh it crashed this is very frustrating and if I was in vim I would have been done with this already And I am going to do it in a minute. Uh, hey, that's system clipboard. Is it not system clipboard? Yank. Is it asterisk? Asterisk yank. Dude. Oh, this is a. This isn't a straight vim. This is something else. All right. So watch this. Uh, let's see if I can do this. duplicates again. Let's do 12. Yeah. So 
We'll take this number. Start recording a macro. Uh, B I W yank twelve right Go forward comma exit paste uh, yank out. Actually, I think this drops it into the zero buffer. Uh, the baby crying. The baby. I can't think. I literally. Literally. I shouldn't even. I literally shouldn't even. Alright, let's try this again. Okay, we start with this. Yeah, we'll start with that. Get a full number. Okay, go here. We start up Q. Back, yank, add, forward. Mathematic, R, copy, plus, one, plus. Um, no, it's R, plus. There we go. And then exit, back, copy, forward, comma. R equals paste. Oh, it's the origin number. That's why. So we're adding it by the same amount each time. So let's undo that. So this is our center point number. We'll save that as R. So QQ, take our number, we put that in the R buffer, forward, comma. No, that's right. Okay, so we have to put this into our R buffer first. And then add it to Then we take the original number, yank it, go forward. Take this number. Change it with r equals paste plus our r buffer oops hit enter and escape that's it no all right right um Right, so the point is that we're going to take this number that we're hovering over. We don't need the comma. Okay, that's the problem. Okay, we're going to take the number that we're on. We're going to add a comma, paste the number. Then we take the number that we're on. Replace it with equal sign the number we just had plus the number in R buffer, hit enter, escape, stop recording, there we go, and we're going 36, 48, except that's 64 for some reason, and then 56, <laughs> Seventy-two, yeah, potato, tomato, and then that's sixty-four. This is twenty-four. Thirty-six. What the heck happened to forty-eight? Am I reading this right? Twelve, twenty-four, thirty-six, sixty-four, fifty-eight. Yeah, that's weird. Well, potato, tomato. Do this, put this in the R buffer, repeat, three, four, 
except these aren't incrementing properly. It's 23, 35, and 46, 57. This is what happens when you keep changing things around. Add an R buffer. Ink. Q. It's 10 column. This increments by an additional 2. That's weird. It's like it's going by 11. That's weird. 12, 24, 36. It's because it's incrementing by 12 every time, genius. Because I'm a genius, that's why. There. So R needs to remain 12. And now we take, yeah, 23. There we go. I can, I can math. 35, 46, 50, 40, 46, 57. Close enough, right? Set that to zero, zero, and then our numbers should be 10, 22, 34, 45. Q, 22, 34, 46, 56, 45, oh, potato, tomato. And then this is, oh, okay, some of these are split out to the thumbs, that's why. So they're kind of in order, they're not entirely in order. We'll do that in nine. 9, we'll still keep that 12. Bring 9 out to 21. See, that's right. Q. Hello. Oh, let's try that. Is that going to work? Yeah, I might not have adjusted this quite well for, uh, for double digits or single digits. 33, 44. And then 55. Yeah, four. Yeah, still, still a little off. Potato, tomato. And we do K9, K8. Uh, so actually, this whole macro that I built for doing this, uh, let me dump that. Input. So there's the macro. V, H, Y. So. If I have a single digit, if I do V, H, Y, that copies it. But if I do have this, I do V, H, Y, it copies that. So I want V, I, W. V, I, W. Yeah, so V, I, W is better. I, v, I, W. We'll take that. And we'll copy that into the Q buffer. And now it will actually work with nine. Or with single digits. Eight. And now when I do this, it got a comma, so. <laughs> uh, is 12 still my R number? A valid expression, comma eight plus 12. E-I-W, yank. The equals has a comma? Let me do this again. Oh shoot, I think I just undid that. Nope, there it is. We do comma r equals r plus r. Hmm. I think that still works. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. W. I don't know if this makes a difference, but I think this uh, this recopy is a problem. Yeah, it doesn't like the the copy coming over. So I can actually just redo that though, because these are all the keystrokes that I did in Vim in order to create the macro. 
So let's do a new macro. B, I, W, Y. I don't know what 80 is. R put plus um was it R equals escape. There we go. And what was I? Eight, twenty, thirty-two, forty-three. Well, the cursor position moves. So there needs to be an H in there. Or an E? Yank, E. Yeah, that moves forward. That's weird. Of course, I could also just increment by 12, which is probably just easier. Uh, 12A. Period, repeat. Period, repeat. Period, repeat, period, repeat. It's always some other way of doing things. <clears throat> I think X is decrement. It's 8, 20, 23, 32, 43, and then 54. Wait a minute, I don't even care about these. 55 works. Yeah, 55 should be excluded. And so should. 53, 56. Yeah, See, this is, this is where I'm actually spending more time. Oh, this is right. I don't know why that's 42, though. This is where I'm probably spending more time just figuring this out than actually doing the work. I'll append that. Do that. And I'll go... Let's do comma skip around like that. There we go. Oh right, it's supposed to be surrounded in things I had control n set up for this but whatever
So it do this there. that's right goodness gracious down there okay well here comes here goes nothing <laughs> oh wow that's hilarious so that worked <laughs> that's just that's just too much so that's what I, that's exactly what I wanted it to do. And uh, that means that if I take this half, oh man, I don't know if this half is going to work the same way because the rotation is slightly different. I mean, I still got to run all the traces, but, but still, that was, that was kind of impressive. And this is the tallest column. It's for 44, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, yeah, to be... 39. So we're going to do the same thing for this. It's a columns. 12, 13. It's plus 1, plus 12. Yeah, we'll do that. And then we're going to 12 add, oops, not it right, 12 add, 1, 2, 3, it's 30, Let's see why are these numbers slightly off, it's got 1, 13, 25, 63, this is fine, just getting ballpark is easier than typing them in manually. 13, 25, and then 63 for some blessed reason. Twenty-five, sixty-three, forty-seven, because reasons, I guess. Two, three, four. Five, six. We'll just drop these over here. Erase the rest of this. No, that was right. Okay. Uh, there we go. B, 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 B. There we go. And where was I? Still adding by 12, I guess. So we'll do. Twelve. Add. So 
let's do QQ 12 add word word dot word word oh wait dot dot word word dot 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 three four one two three four five quit recording that playback that playback 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 so starting point there we go what did I say 13 HL search oh just for that. We've got 13, 25, 63, 47. We've got K2, 14, 26, 37, 48, and no more. 3 is 15, 27, 38, 49. Is that how all these work? I think that's all we have for that. I think these are the rest. 4 is 16, 28, 39, 40, 41. And yeah, that's right. Okay. 5 is 17, 29, 40. 6, 18, 30, 41. All right. We will append to that line. Oh, that's not right. Square bracket. Do that to the rest of these. Go to comma. Change the comma to open, close. Wait a minute. Let's do that. Do that again. Uh, change comma to open comma k open there we go that looks right that looks good and this one's off I have 62 over here. Square brace. Hello? Where is my. There we go. Okay. Oops. I forgot about this again. Again. Copy. That was a little bit off. Whatever. Oh, I had a macro for inverting these, but I kind of don't care. I think these are all right. We'll go program the columns in. Should probably save our work. Oh no, I forgot. That's why we weren't saving our work because of SSHFS. <laughs> No, you're going to be slow. Oh, there we go. Okay. Align column from top down. So we still have to associate or realign our columns. Uh, but we can still do set this up. There we go. both of those actually we do that and we'll do those 
So ostensibly I have created the alignment points off that column. Where did I do that? So we get our center key, we align above the center key, then we take our keys right of center, then we take our keys left of center, that aligns all the top rows. So after that, we do That handles our right side. And this would be right here. Um, I mean, we're still setting this up. It's okay. basically going to do the same thing down here because we don't need this. Uh, yeah, that's right. Put that up here. No, I'm not going to save. I'm not going to save. Um. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, man. Rotate 33 degrees. Okay, got that. Yeah, okay. I think we're in good good shape. We're just gonna change this imperative section to we'll put a comment in there. That was weird. Am I not in Python mode? Whoa what? That was weird. Python has this semi-hilarious artifact where if you put things in, uh, if you if you make strings, <laughs> there, if you use triple quotes, you can do multi-line strings. And if you just drop a string into a Python argument, it just is like okay, it just ignores it because <laughs> you haven't done anything with it. So you can use these to make comments. It's pretty hilarious, unintended feature, I guess. What would you recommend for someone who wants to learn how to design a PCB? I'm kind of struggling. Well, the, there's different steps of it. Uh, KiCad, obviously, I recommend only because it's free and has the fewest quirks. Um, and by free, I mean free as in beer. Or free as in speech, not free as in beer. Uh, because the KiCad will... Good heavens. I talked a little bit earlier about software that uh, doesn't respect you and changes its free, free, free software that changes its uh, subscription model later or updates to a subscription model later. But KiCad is featured enough to be able to do, <coughs> excuse me, do a lot of this stuff. Um, the other thing is, you know, just tons of tutorials on this. I would recommend taking the time and dedicating to learning it just so you can have something that is a bit more future-proof that isn't going to change its uh, licensing scheme in the future because you'll wind up like high and dry like the the folks who learned Fusion 360. This is going to be kind of a weird shape. Hmm. Right, the other thing is this this rotation point. Good heavens. I see that's the wrong way. So this would be 30. There we go. That makes our new rotation point is k value 39. And our imperative section here. This is kind of weird. I need to have this separated. These are already defined. We're going to redefine these. The columns are static. <coughs> this 
spacing is still uh, angle I think angle needs to be updated yeah yeah that's okay there we go Uh, but as far as like um, developing the designing the circuit, like I, I can't help you there. I, I don't know enough about designing circuits. I know how to build keyboards, but that's only because I've studied enough keyboard building to like build keyboards and stuff. Um, but I've just been learning incrementally since that, and I've been building. I mean, I've been building increasingly complex circuit boards like for stuff like this uh where i have to actually design something of a circuit for it and this is a project board so i'm mainly just using a circuit board as a replacement for a mass of wires so i don't know too much about circuit design but uh, as far as if you know what the design is if you have the schematic set up already which you know there's a lot of open source schematics out there that you can just uh, latch onto. Uh, once you build that, then building a circuit board is, uh, but generally it's not too complicated. It, this keyboard section is a little bit, you know, in this design, normally the circuit board is just a means of getting the components to connect to each other, you know, in whatever layout, just so the circuit works. Uh, here we're actually using the circuit board as a, a means of orienting our keys and orienting how our product is laid out because all of this is you know you can see here um, these switches for, for the signum series they have multiple items in the footprint so there's multiple switch locations that you can place this in so all of these have to fit together and not uh, you know uh, overlap with each other cause issues um, you know I, I don't know enough about electrical engineering to be able to say uh, there's lots of stuff I probably should have worried about, but I didn't have to, it wasn't a problem. So I just kind of messed around with it and I was like, ah, I wonder if this will work. And, and it did. And I'm just as surprised as everyone else. <laughs> <coughs> so uh, it, the cool thing about KiCad though is this, this scripting console. This is this, this button up here, the scripting console. That's, that's the big deal. That's how we're getting down here and we're able to do all this stuff and how I'm capable of doing see if this works but so our angle is we need to reset this for the imperative section 334 is our new angle uh, let me yeah this is right okay 334 is our angle our center key is going to be k39 above center key is defined as 28, 16, 4, 28, 16, 4, top row center column key is 4, <coughs> this says keys to the right of the center column, but given the way that the best guess function works, it doesn't actually matter if they're left or right, it just matters that this is one unit away, and this is one unit away, and this is two units away, and this is two units away, and then the next one is three. So technically, it says left and right, but it's not true, technically. Three, two, one. Oops, what was that? I hit some combination of keys there. Three, two, one. And then aside from four is gonna be five. Oops, five, six. It is nap time for baby, and baby does not like nap time. But baby needs nap time. This is what we must understand. <laughs> So, uh, so this is technically, I think this, this is ready to go, which is weird, but this is all, like I said, this is all imperative, but let's see if it works. Let's see if it crashes. So, uh, here's the moment of truth again, one more time. And paste, plus, let me make sure I get everything in here. Yeah, we're good. Wait. Yeah. All right. Ready, set. Don't break. Yep. 
Let's see if we've accomplished our goal. So the the goal is that everything orients off of this switch here that we've adjusted and typed in some key relationships. So those key relationships are um, they're on a per PCB basis and oh boy. <laughs> Oh man, <coughs> good heavens! And so something, uh, something got off there. <laughs> Love it. Oh, I've, I've created abstract art. <laughs> Let's see. One column one, column two, three, column four, column five, column six. I don't think I need. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. So I'm on 1097. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Angle's 26. Column is 20. Yo, I think my angle's still 26. Yeah, I think my angle is still 26, even though I have to set the angle to 334 in KiCad. So the other cool thing about uh, operating in the scripting console is <laughs> you get nothing, you get no undos. <laughs> but we do get to do this fun thing since we've been building our code properly and slightly imperatively, but you know, hey, we're just getting work done here. Um, I think I've got this. Yeah, dude, check this out. Revert to last backup. Is the original layout. We're going to set a rotation 10. I'm going to rotate key 44. Done. And we're going to rotate K39 to 34. That's our those are our homing keys. So we'll do the right half first. Um, so it's snapshots. We should make it a snapshot of everything, actually. Align column to top of the, Yeah, that's right. Okay. Now we will paste all that in. Oh, I still have all that. The, the scripting console didn't crash. I just reverted the backup. That's good. And now we go back down to our imperative section. Yeah, is this all here? Yeah, it's still here. Okay, cool. Um, that means I only need to do this. Now I can go down here and take a look at this. And if you if you will notice, we'll do we'll do our magic. Alakazam. Yeah, just kidding. Kaikat takes a little bit longer than that. <clears throat> so now this is this is why we have coffee. Yeah. <sighs> <coughs> Lol, what? A line column from top down. Why is the line column from top down not working? Yeah, something's off with this. Look at this. This this split right here. These are at a funky angle. I've messed up my align column from top down function somehow. Align column from top down. Origin column pop. For target and column. Best guess origin. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't look right. So I've, I've screwed something up in here. Let's look at uh, column 12. It looks like it's not set to orient or something. I mean, like...
Am I wrong? Well, what? Oh, is Python doing Python things? No. Is it is it passing a memory reference rather than the actual data point? Like a, a copy of it? Because if so, I don't want that to happen. I think we. I think that was the problem. Is it doing stuff? It's either doing stuff or it's crashing. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh... I prefer my, my objects immutable here. <clears throat> but since we're being imperative and Python is going to be, be silly about this stuff, so what what happened is this uh, these column references, um, they changed each time they were referenced. I think, which actually doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why they would have, because we do this align column from top down. This is because we're popping, and every time we run it, it's gonna pop the column. So I do actually have to replace this afterwards. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, is it put? I can never remember Python syntax. Uh, one. Home one. Dude, what did I just press? Shoot. What is that? What is that? I don't know what that is. Control P. Control. I don't. What is that? Control up. Control shift up. Control alt up. Control. Control. Up. Control up. All right. Sure. Oh, it's insert. <clears throat> and then uh, index followed by object. Okay. So we can do that. Insert followed by origin. So we're replacing the origin. Um, except column needs to equal column. So it's, it's, you can't reassign these. They're, they're, they're memory references. They're not copies of variables when you pass them. Because, because Python. That's why. Alright. Um... That's X. Was it Control X? Z D. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm actually gonna revert and try again just to make sure I got this right. I should probably reset the scripting console actually. Uh, revert last backup. There we go. Take. Uh, I want a 44. That's right. <coughs> 16, wait, yeah, that's right. I want that to be 26. Hello. 26. And then 39. Set that to 334. All right. Let's try our imperative code again one more time. Um. <clears throat> That over here. That'll reset that. There we go. And now, do the thing. <coughs> we'll make it look pretty in a bit. 
after we like make it work properly. Just you know, take take your time. Look at that. Pretty neat. Let's do the second half. So this is what I had selected. Second half. Ah, yeah. So that was. Uh, that might not actually. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it needs to be 26. So we're gonna we're gonna find out. Yeah, we're gonna find out. We know the first half works. I'm surprised Kai Cat hasn't crashed on us yet. <clears throat> this computer's in need of an upgrade anyways. <laughs> we need to Come on, Kai Cat. I believe in you. Oh look at that boy. Yes. Awesome, 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 awesome. Awesome, possum. <laughs> so the next step, um, and that's cool. So we have to get our uh, diodes reset. And we can actually do this. Um, oh, that'll crash if it if I grab the wrong. Hmm. Let me fix these little corner corner boys. Uh, yeah, I was right about that. That's cool. <clears throat> so our corner boys. <laughs> Thought that needed to be calculated as a, a section of 90 degrees rather than, you know, the, the full 334. 90 rather than 270. <sighs> Actually, I should probably take a break. That's good work. Good work. Where is my... Oh, no. Oh, my internet history. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, yeah, is a... Where is it? M1 Carbine. Magazines. Megazones. And you, you gotta get you gotta get good uh, good manufacturer. You can't just pick generics. You know, this is like manufacturers U.S. military, so it's like who knows. I prefer to get like the KCI stuff because it's at least modern construction, and you can you can tweak it, and other people have experience with it too. Let's see, original. Oh yeah, like this. This is uh, the military, the Korean military surplus. Look at that. 1,080 round can on strip eclipse. Brilliant. But the Tula ammo is cheaper. <laughs> Not by much, but, but still cheaper. <clears throat> that M1 carbine's just neat. Oh yeah, this is just neat too. The color Maximite. This runs basic at uh, a ridiculous... Where is it? Lines. There, executes basic at uh, 270,000 lines per second. So if you like basic, and you're like, I'm, I'm kind of a programmer, I guess I could do like some, uh, some uh, control stuff, like hardware control stuff. This will give you basic, so you don't even have to learn C or anything. <laughs> <coughs> Plus, it's fast enough you can make your own like video games and stuff like that it's really really impressive cool stuff oh, is it, what is it 100 bucks yeah 100 bucks for that <clears throat> pretty impressive that's the, the code for that yeah see this is this is the the file i was looking for oh it has a file name in it this is the file name that i need where is it 
Stupid thing, I can't read it. You have such terrible resolution, Troy. Oh, I can't even go higher than that. Terrible, terrible, terrible. It's 0618, I think. Yeah, I'll be able to find that later. <laughs> but uh, it's cool. It is definitely break time now because this is working. And I'm going to leave this where it is. And this is done saving. So GG. Uh, we'll adjust a few things and then make this a little bit less imperative. Solid code, but just needs to be uh, adjusted. So let me... No, I'm not going to save. I can revert it whenever I want, so... All right, I'll catch you all later. <clears throat> See if I can get back on and finish this up.